Hey, this is Chris and welcome to this DaVinci Resolve Fusion node breakdown. Today's node is the Lens Distort node. So we're here in Fusion and we're going to bring in a Lens Distort node. And what we normally use the Lens Distort node for in VFX is if we have a shot like this and we need to do any VFX work, we pretty much want to undistort this, do our VFX, and then redistort it. So that's exactly what the lens distort node is for. And also, typically, whenever you would do VFX shots like this, you would have all the camera info, like the, what lens they used, how they shot it, that, everything. You'd have all that data, which is extremely helpful when you're doing shots like this. So let's jump into the lens distort node and I'll explain why some of that's important. So right off the bat, you have the options to either distort it or undistort it. Your edges up here are whether anything that goes outside your domain of definition is going to uh, duplicate or kind of extend across the uh, canvas or clipping mode. If it's set on domain, it's going to retain like all the pixels that are moved outside the frame. So you can uh, undistort it later and all that information will still still be there. If you set it on frame, anything outside that domain def definition is actually going to get clipped off and is uh, unrecoverable. The output distortion map outputs a uh, the location of all the pixels as a warp screen coordinate map but we are not going to use this and I'm not going to cover it. Under lens distortion model, you actually have a specific way this model is going to work. And a lot of this depends on what other software you're using and everything. But if we're not importing any extra 3D data, uh, like camera tracks or anything like that, you just want to leave this on a 3DE classic LD model and I'm going to skip this for right now. Under camera settings, this is where you would actually put your camera settings. If you knew your exact focal length, uh, what film gate they used, your aperture width and height. So this is pretty uh, specific to exactly how they shot and you would have all this information for a real VFX shot. But if you don't have this information, we're just gonna use the, uh, the standard pixel aspect ratio and just leave everything right here. Now under your sampling options for your super sampling HIQ, uh, one by one, two by two, four by four, eight by eight. This is just how, how fine it's going to sample all these pixels to uh, distort and undistort. So it depends on your shot and obviously uh, higher uh, sample rates means way higher load time. So we're just gonna leave this on one by one for this. For subsample mode, um, you can use nearest or bilinear. Nearest is gonna give you a crisper uh, subsample and bilinear, bilinear may be a little blurred. So just watch what you're doing when you're actually doing production value stuff. So if, you're, uh, if your samples are starting to get a little soft, you might wanna use uh, nearest on here and it'll be a little crisper and down here this load distortion data if you are using uh, like a third party 3d tracker or anything uh, one of the most commons that these nodes are kind of written for is 3d equalizer and if you have that data you can just hit load distortion data and it'll load all that info in there but since we don't have all this nice juicy information and 3d camera tracks and all that stuff we're gonna manually undistort our image here. And a lot of times what I like to do is, anytime I'm doing any type of undistorting or distorting, I'll just grab a uh, background and stick it in there so I can kind of see what's going on. And you can move it around to uh, Kind of keep your uh, horizontal and vertical lines straight and we're just going to kind of resize this so i have that and i'm just going to uh, bring my blind way down 
So this way you can kind of see what's staying straight and what's not straight. So under our lens distort, we can come down here and start messing with our distortion to kind of start straightening it up. And again, it's a by shot. By no means are we gonna get this perfectly horizontal because the shot doesn't allow for that. You've got the ability to uh, change anamorphic squeeze if it's uh, an anamorphic shot, but it's not. You can change your curvature on X only and Y only, and you can uh, change your quartic distortion, which means uh, kind of your ends that gets uh, distorted out a little bit. So we're just going to uh, let's slam that slam that let's not and we're just gonna eyeball this and try to get it as straight as possible and that looks fairly good so once you've got it straight then you can start adding all your uh, VFX to it so say we wanted to add a plane this upside down too this is the top view of a plane <laughs> so our plane's flying upside down obviously if we were doing a re real vfx shot we'd do this with 3d and get a real plane <laughs> but <laughs> this will work for this all right so we've got our plane so our plane is flying across our sky and let's say we want to let's add some some effects on this building here so what we would do is track this building and obviously trying to track this shot using a planar track would would be difficult because uh, you can kind of see it's changing shape and moving on the original but if we use this shot we can track it much easier so let's go ahead and track this shot so we can add a planar tracker and let's get our undistorted footage and we will first create let's go ahead and set this we're going to use hybrid point area and I'm going to change this to a fine Let's create our track. There we go. Get in there and fine tune this. And I already know this track isn't going to work very well. Just because uh, the kind of data that's showing up here. not going to work perfectly well but kind of get that in there straight and let's track forward
once we got our track we can see our track slipped a few times but that's fine you would go in here normally and uh, make this nice and neat so remember from our last node breakdown create planar transform so we've got that data and we can delete this so let's bring in another merge node bring in some footage let's throw our little waves on here and then let's grab our corner positioner and then plug our corner positioner into our planar track and from our planar track into our merge and we can move our pins around to match our building here. And I'm just going to kind of eyeball this. node and let's change it to color dodge there we go that'll work so now if we play all this back we've got everything kind of in line we've got our little building effects going on and our plane flying across but since our uh, original footage looked like this, we need to bring this back. So we can take our lens distort node, control C to copy it, paste it, stick it back in at the end, and instead of undistort, we're gonna click distort. So now if we go back and look at our output, we have the same distorted image that we started with, with our effects on it correctly in there, matching the distortion of our camera. And we'll play this back. And there we go. We have our plane and our little effects on our building matching the distortion of our original footage. And now for something like this, I would normally use, like I always say, the Mocha Pro node. Because this node itself, it would do our lens distort, and then we would do a camera track to track the entire camera shot. And then we could do our planar tracking, and then undistort all within this one single node it's kind of like a lord of the rings <laughs> one node to rule them all but uh i'll get into this one node later so that is your lens distort node i will see you in the next node breakdown